Well, good morning, everyone. It is the appointed time for the meeting of the MAP-3 Citizens Advisory Board of September 26, 2019. We'll call the meeting to order. You've been furnished with copies. Well, let me start with this. Carol, do you agree that we have a quorum? Yes, sir. We have a quorum. You've been furnished with copies of the minutes of our previous meeting on August the 22nd, 2019. Are there additions or corrections to the minutes? been moved and seconded. We approve the minutes as submitted. Further discussion? All, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. It's adopted. The next item is the uh, item three on the agenda, the MAF-3 revenue and expenditure reports and the MAF-3 budget and obligation reports for as of September the 10th. David, any comments for us to consider? Well, you have several um of revenue and expenditure reports because of the close of the fiscal year. The last couple of meetings, we didn't have those. Those are now in your, in your packet. I'll go over the ones ending in uh, August. So on the revenue side for the month, $469,773 for the fiscal year of $930,242 and total program revenue of $831,858,427. On the expenditure side for the month, nine million fifty nine thousand one hundred ninety seven. Fiscal year of nine million three hundred eighty nine thousand seven hundred forty seven and total on the expenditures of five hundred and eighty eight million nine hundred seventy thousand four hundred ninety nine. Then you also have the um, the uh, budget and obligations report in your packet, and I'll try to answer any questions that you might have on those. Michael Adams, any comments that you want to offer for us today? No, I didn't uh, see anything unusual, so I'm good. All right. Anyone else have a question for David? Shall we receive it? Been moved and seconded. We receive the report as submitted. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The report is received. Item four, David. Uh, item four is a presentation on the construction progress of the Scissor Tail Upper Park. This will be our last uh, update on the Upper Park construction until it is open, since it will be open tomorrow. Glad to bring this to you. Again, we have Gavin McMillan here from Hargraves and Associates to bring you up to speed on what you can expect to see this weekend. Welcome, Gavin. Thank you. Uh, this, is, this is a fantastic uh, week, so we're really looking forward to the weekend. Uh, so we're going to replace these uh, photographs with the real deal uh, <laughs> next week. Uh, as you all know, this is a project that's 10 years in the making, and uh, the last two months have, have uh, really been a, a hell ride. Uh, so I just want to uh, say thank you to the, the MAPS office uh, for the final push. This was uh, the end of August, and uh, we still had about a third of the site to uh, lay down trees and vegetation in a very short order. Uh, so uh, out there today, uh, all the green is, is in, um, and uh, everything's functioning and ready for the, uh, the opening. Um, there was planting going on uh, until 11 o'clock at night <laughs> under the headlights of trucks uh, to make this happen. So we really appreciate the work crews and the effort they put in as well. Um, there was lots of work at nighttime, uh, aiming all of the lights uh, in the playground, uh, particularly around the spider, where the kids will be climbing on quite soon. Um, and the, uh, the bowlers and, and play area around the playground. Uh, the finishes are quite beautiful. They're going to be very comfortable uh, for when the, 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 the gates are finally open and people are allowed in. Uh, the playground is going to be very popular with the, the kids and families. Uh, it's an amazing thing and it's quite expansive. Uh, the fountain is up and running. If you've driven by uh, Robinson, uh, you can see that now. Over 90 jets um, and over an acre of, uh, of stonework there. We had our first uh, person on a bike ride through it yesterday, uh, and she had a lot of fun as well. Um, at, at nighttime, we get the reflection of downtown uh, into the, the fountain base, which is, which is fantastic. Uh, and even when the water is off, uh, the fountain looks amazing, uh, even when it's dry. Uh, the signage went in over the weekend uh, with the Sousa Tail Park logo. And on the right there, I just want to remind you, the bottom of the sign is blank, and it's removable. Uh, so when the lower park comes on, um, that goes on the, on the board as well. Uh, so the most amazing thing about this weekend is we're, this is part one. Uh, we still have part two to do. Uh, so we, we uh, after the opening, we'll be uh, bringing that uh, lower park back to you. 
the interpreted signage is in, the find the way around. Um, and we have an IT room in uh, Union Station. So this is the, the, the servers that the park uses uh, with the fiber optic uh, system within the city. Misting system is up around the trellises for uh, the, the hot weather, even though we're quite cool today. Uh, the boathouse is magnificent. Uh, the boats are out there now uh, at the pier. Uh, the lake is, uh, is beautiful. Uh, it's uh, attracting birds already. Uh, besides the Canadian geese, uh, we're getting uh, a lot of uh, native birds coming back into the site. The wetland plants are establishing in the lake. Um, and then the recirculation system is starting to work and turn over, and you'll gradually see uh, the brown water turn clear. At night time, the site is magic. Uh, it is really beautiful, um, and it's a, quite an experience to walk around. Um, the oval here you can see lit, which is now the, the Love Great Lawn, and uh, the Skydance Bridge in the background. The promenade with the lights that go all the way up, 27 lights, uh, and eventually they'll go all the way to the river as well. Uh, sitting in the play pavilion looking at the lake uh, with the bridge. The bridge is, is, is beautiful uh, at night time, just the experience of walking across it. You can see it there, again, in the reflection in the water and the Skydance Bridge. Um, in your packet there, you can pull out this page. This is kind of a fact sheet. When uh, people ask you questions, uh, you'll be able to answer uh, the size of things and, and how long it took. Um, uh, but the, you know, the most uh, interesting thing about this is you know, this has been a MAPS project. Uh, it's ended up a park uh, for everyone. Um, and it's taken a village uh, to really make this park uh, come through. And, and I think the people of Oklahoma City are really going to enjoy it uh, this weekend, uh, but for time to come as well. Uh, horticulturally, we had to plant in, in, uh, in summer, so uh, you're going to have to give the plants a little bit of a, a break. Uh, but next spring, uh, they're going to come through and, and look amazing. Um, we are on our change order number 14. In the frenzy of activity in the last two months, uh, we have 11 items to quickly run through. Uh, but uh, item number one was uh, we got additional and larger trees for the playground. We just needed more shade in there. So we have an item there for over uh, $17,000. Uh, that work is installed. Uh, the trellises, the timber work, they went in uh, last winter and they had already weathered uh, to gray. So we wanted to pop the color of that to make them look like we just um, built them. So there's $31,835 there. Uh, we added a red shutter to the stage, so when there's a light inside, uh, the audience outside uh, does not see that, uh, $1,528 there. Item number four is uh, from the ADA inspector from the city. Uh, he just wanted to extend the, the uh, cabinets and enclosures so uh, no one gets trapped underneath them in the two of the buildings. There's uh, $2,240 there. Item number five is uh, from the fire department to add uh, the number of addresses on each of the four buildings that faces the streets and to add a lockbox for uh, the, the keys that uh, they need to get into the buildings in case of emergency. Uh, $2,698 there. Item number six is uh, the cafe uh, on the boulevard. Uh, the equipment roof, there's different colored equipment up there, so we want to make that all the same color. That's not actually done yet, so they'll be done after the opening. Uh, $3,166 there. Item number seven is, uh, you remember, we, uh, we ran out of time to seed all the buffalo grass on the site, and we, we did a change order for the sod. We all missed a bit <laughs> uh, in front of Union Station, uh, so we uh, added uh, an extra $32,336 there for that item. Uh, item number eight is uh, tree transport in the frenzy of activity. Uh, we needed the last 120 uh, trees to site as soon as possible, which exceeded the capacity of the, the nursery. So we paid the general contractor $3,387 uh, to go get those trees so we could plant them uh, only two weekends ago. Uh, item number nine, uh, additional spare materials for opening. Uh, the operator is, is now obviously setting up the park. Uh, they wanted additional uh, sod, you know, the buffalo sod and the buff uh, uh, Bermuda sod and bags of mulch uh, just to do spot repairs uh, during the opening. So there's uh, $1,566 there. Item number 10, uh, the Robinson lawn uh, above the fountain is the last piece of grass that went in uh, last weekend. And it has the most water on it at the moment. So we add additional sub drainage just to make sure that water goes away and does not uh, run across the pavement. Uh, so $4,934 there. Last item, uh, number 11 is uh, the signage that I showed you a picture on there. We actually have uh, Braille uh, on those signs. 
And originally we had plastic braille, but in the mock-ups it wasn't durable enough, so we changed it to stainless steel uh, across the whole site. Uh, so there's uh, $7,715 there. So all those 11 items total up to change order number 14, which is uh, $108,487. Uh, and we're, we're complete. <laughs> uh, and there's just a table, uh, a summary of all the change orders to date, including the one we just talked about, bringing the total of the contract up to $60,278,221 uh, and some change. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to ask you, uh, but uh, it's been a, an incredible ride and I hope everyone gets a chance to enjoy the park over, over the weekend. Uh, thank you for the the Park Subcommittee Board who have been in this all, all the way through, uh, and we look forward to uh, moving on to the lower park. Uh, he has explained the uh, uh, purpose of the uh, suggested change order. Shall we approve it? Been moved and seconded that we approve the change order as presented. Change order number 14 for the Scissor Tail Park. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is adopted. Gavin, I want to say to you and all of your colleagues at Hargraves how much we really appreciate the vision and the, and the design and the effort that you put into the upper park. It's, I think, going to fulfill everybody's expectations, and, and uh, you guys have done a great job for us. You have a world-renowned reputation. You've earned it. You've certainly earned it with us, and we really appreciate the great work you've done. And with all the collaborators that you've hired locally, uh, the butchers and everyone else that uh, you guys have hired to work with you, uh, this has been uh, a team effort. and. Uh, we're on the brink of a dream come true. Many thanks to you. All I'm, right, let's go. I'm, uh, on behalf of the subcommittee, too, Gavin, we said this yesterday. I know Kim is going to be here, um, but obviously she's not here yet. And uh, also, I could never convey the way Kim does with her enthusiasm, passion, and eloquent words. But also, thank you so much. You guys were amazing, and we so enjoyed the subcommittee. All right, then that takes us to item uh, six on the agenda. Uh, David? <coughs> Pardon me. Our item six is recommend resolution approving change order number 16, MAPS 3 Convention Center, increase of $613,620, project M3-C003. There are several items on this, uh, this change order, some uh, electrical modifications uh, for 20 air handling units, that needed different size electrical circuits, uh, some sound enclosures for the mezzanine, there's a dishwasher upgrade, uh, some additional control joints on the exterior plaster. Um, the commissioning team, if you recall, we have a, a separate consultant working with the contractor to um, make sure that everything integrates well, and the commissioning team found a few things that needed to be revised, so there was $7,000 on that. Some uh, louver penthouse mechanical, uh, penthouse mechanical louvers that needed to be um, changed out for $4,100. But the, the largest part of this uh, change order is this, the street light poles, fixtures, and the wiring. If you remember, we uh, previously did the footings and the conduits while they were doing the groundwork. Now we're ready to go ahead and get the poles. And the reason why we have this item is because these are the Project 180 style poles that OG&E does not carry. We have to purchase those. And, and put those up, and there's 47 of them. So this has been checked also with the, uh, the current contract that, that uh, Public Works has, and, and it all um, coincides with those prices on that also. So this comes with the recommendation from the Convention Center Subcommittee. Sue, any comments? No. Been moved and seconded. We approve the resolution as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed, no. It is adopted. Item 7, David. Item 7 is recommend resolution approving the site for Mass 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number 3, vicinity of Northeast 36th Street and North Lincoln Boulevard, Project M3-H004. Jason Cotton with ADG is going to give you a little bit of information on this. 
morning, everyone. So I will tell you, uh, yesterday morning when I gave this presentation, David got a round of applause and almost a standing ovation. So he's told me if he doesn't get the same thing this morning, he will take it personally. So I'm just going <laughs> to lay that charge out for everyone here. But uh, uh, this is a significant milestone for this project. Um, I have personally been involved with this project for about a year now, and I know many of you here have been uh, living and eating and breathing this for much longer than that. So. I'm going to do my best to kind of tell the story of kind of where we've been, where we are, and kind of where we're headed. And so um, that's kind of the overarching story we're going to uh, tell here today. I, I think the other thing that uh, resonated with me in particular on this project over the last year is I, you really, I think you have to commend the, the City of Oklahoma City and the MAPS office for uh, there was a meeting, a community meeting at Langston University in uh, winter of last year, and the community basically asked the MAPS office to step back and reconsider this project and where it was going to be located. And uh, I think the last several months of effort and kind of where we are today is kind of a testament to the fact that they heard what the community said and they, they took a step back and they listened, and I think that's what this process is for. So it says, I think it says a lot to uh, how that the process is working and that this is what we're here for. So um, just a little bit of history, the high points. Uh, as you remember, the subcommittee identified uh, the general area that uh, the Health and Wellness Center th number three is was to be located in. and so. I believe that was, I have a map here in a minute, but it was generally located, uh, bounded on the east by, I think, Bryan Avenue, on the west by Lincoln, and then on the south by 4th, and then on the north by, like, Northeast 63rd Street. And so uh, the subcommittee uh, identified that general area that this the area was the center was supposed to be located in. And so based on that, they sent out an operator RFQ. We went through that process. And uh, as you all know, Winston University was selected as the operator. Um, soon after that, we actually went through the architect engineer selection process. And so, as you know, uh, Hormick Blatt Architects was selected for this wellness center. And so uh, we went through that process. Soon after uh, Hormick Blatt was brought on board, we had, a, as I said, we had a community meeting at Langston University in Northeast Oklahoma City. Um, we kind of went over, uh, I think, the site. I, I'm trying to think back, Dave. You'll have to fill in some gaps here. But we went over the site and kind of what the anticipated schedule was. And that's kind of when this dialogue started about is this the right side? Is there another place we can, could, should consider? And so on and so forth. And so that's kind of the history that kind of got us to where we uh, are today. So based on that, uh, the meeting that evening, the MAPS office went to work and uh, went back and looked at basically 18 different sites in this kind of preferred area that had been uh, previously identified. And so you see a map here that kind of uh, shows you all of those sites. Uh, those sites came from multiple sources, from uh, people within the city of Oklahoma City, uh, uh, and other entities involved, working with the operator as well, and also people from the community that stepped in and said, hey, what about this location? And so uh, the city took a step back. We looked at all of those uh, potential locations. We looked at demographic data at all those locations. You see here on uh, the slide some of the data that was looked at. And so uh, all of these pieces of information are very important to the overall uh, success of the Wellness Center. And so that's why we uh, stepped back and looked at those. So, uh, so as a kind of getting to the end of that process, those 18 sites kind of funneled down into really four that seemed to kind of rise to the top. And so um, those four sites are identified here on the slide. And so you can see they're uh, site three at Northeast 36th Street and North Lincoln Boulevard, site six at I-44 and MLK, site seven at 58th Street and MLK, and then site nine at 36th Street and MLK. And so uh, as I said, uh, we had already selected Hormick Blatt Architects to help us through this project, and so uh, we really, the MAPS office really focused their efforts on those four sites um, and looked at them in detail. Uh, Hormick Blatt Architects uh, was involved in trying to, you know, part of siting a facility like this is just trying to figure out is there enough physical space on the site for all the things that we need to put on it, um, not only the building, but parking and all of those things. And so Hornbeek Blatt was uh, obviously involved in that and kind of gen generating some, you know, general ideas uh, about how much room we needed and, and whether or not each one of these sites could support that program. And so uh, we went through that process. And again, as I said before, a lot of community input and dialogue, also input from the operator, which is an important, uh, obviously, person in this process. Um, and so based on all of that uh, information, we did, we have arrived at a site. And so... Uh, I think this is when everybody stood up and clapped, David, but I can't remember. So, um, so site three uh, is what we have arrived at, and so it's located, again, on Northeast 36th Street and North Lincoln Boulevard. We think that the program is going to need approximately five acres. 
Um, it is a really uh, good site in terms of it's got kind of minor topographic relief, and so it will be uh, easy to develop. Um, there's also uh, adequate access to public utilities, and so that's obviously a plus. Uh, there's also a uh, access to uh, public transportation. There's public transportation in the immediate area, and so that's a good thing as well. Um, there's also obviously a conversation going on about uh, the northeast uh, grocery store, the grocery store in northeast Oklahoma City, and so we feel like there's a lot of potential synergy between this facility and, and that being uh, co-located, and so um, obviously that, that puts this project to the top of the list or this site to the top of the list. So uh, that's a little bit about where we're at. So moving forward, um, we've kind of put together a preliminary schedule on how we think this project moves forward. And so you can see here, uh, we'll be issuing a notice to proceed uh, this month to uh, Hornbeek Blight Architects to proceed on the, pr on the preliminary report. So that would put their preliminary report to council uh, in February of next year. Uh, their final plans to council in midsummer around July, uh, which would get us to a late summer bid date, probably an early fall construction start, and then opening in about December of 21 is kind of what we're anticipating now. Um, so that's really uh, all I have today. If uh, there are any questions, I'm obviously uh, answering them to the best of my ability. Questions? Comments? No questions, just comments. Um, congratulations. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Um, I, I mentioned yesterday in the meeting um, that um, Vice President Alice Strong Simmons, who started out with this, this was actually her original request. And so we were told that it wasn't available, and apparently we just needed to wait a year or two, and it became available. So we're really excited um, that the Wellness Center number three on in the Northeast community is, is getting, getting, getting off to a, a good start, so. Thank you. Mike? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think the one thing we looked at uh, and what made me so uh, encouraged and happy to find this site is it not only ties a wellness center where people can come to with great public transportation, but it also allows, after you finish working out, to be able to go to a grocery store and a pharmacy. So it's just a win-win on several different levels, and we're really proud of the location. Just to reiterate basically what has already been said, I was particularly pleased to see representatives, folks from the Northeast community um, who came to the meeting and just so excited about that site. And that, that, that just makes it all worthwhile as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so much. All right, then. Shall we approve this? It's been moved and seconded. We approve the resolution as presented. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, <laughs> no. It is approved. Next item, David. <laughs> uh, item eight is recommend resolution approving the allocation of $500,000 from excess collections and or interest from the Oklahoma City Capital Improvement Sales Tax Fund, MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number three, vicinity of Northeast 36th Street and Lincoln Boulevard. Project M3-H004. You were pretty confident, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in keeping with the idea that, that um, we, we, lose, we lose a little bit of the facility every year due to inflation and this project being behind a little bit and that it is starting at the same time, presumably, that, that uh, Wellness Center 4 will start, the subcommittee wanted to bring those budgets up to, to where they were equal so that we would have equal facilities, which we have tried to, to do in, in all cases. So we're asking here to allocate $500,000 to bring those budgets up to the same level. And you're going to explain to us where that money's coming from. Well, we are accruing about $400,000 a month in interest. We've got the, the money that when we approve the, the preliminary allocation in um, earlier this year, that we had the, the, about $14.5 million in there that we were going to have to make a decision either for a wellness center or a trail, so it could come out of that, but we've also got some unaccounted for interest in there. Any questions about that? I, I guess, just to make sure I understand correctly, this brings the budget for Center 3 up to the same level as the budget for Center 4? Yes, sir. Okay. Other questions? Been moved and seconded. We approve the resolution as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 
It is approved. Item 9, David. Uh, item 9 is recommend resolution approving the site for MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number 4, vicinity of Southwest 134th Street and Southwestern Avenue Project M3 H005. Again, Jason Cotton will give you some background on this project. You don't have to clap this time, so you're all right. Uh, so, uh, this is a very similar uh, presentation to what we uh, just did on Wellness 3, and so I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Um, again, just to give you a little bit of history uh, on Wellness Center number four, um, as with Wellness Center number three, the subcommittee identified kind of some preferred areas. So there's been a conversation going on about really two areas, South Oklahoma City and near Northwest Oklahoma City. And so you see those areas here on the map, and those were obviously inclu included in the operator RFQ that went out. Um, just like Wellness Center number three, we went through an operator selection process and on an RFQ. And uh, we've gone through that process, and the, the y YMCA of Greater Oklahoma City has been uh, selected as our operator. Um, we also went through uh, the a &E selection process as on Wellness Center number three, and so we've selected GSB Architects as our architect for Wellness Center number four. And uh, so I believe it was earlier this summer we, we um, kind of headed down the path of, of moving forward on Wellness Center number four. We, did have a little bit of conversation at the subcommittee level about what the correct site was for Wellness Center number four. You know, obviously everyone here knows the YMCA has uh, early wine and other facilities in South Oklahoma City, and so there was a little bit of a conversation that happened, and uh, so they asked us to kind of step back and look at this one more time. And so again, uh, not so much from the community side, but just kind of internally at the subcommittee level, we kind of wanted to step back and look at it a second time. And so uh, you see here a very similar map. Uh, we've looked at um, basically 15 potential sites within these two preferred areas. And so that list included uh, input from the City of Oklahoma City staff at Oklahoma City, um, as well as from the operator. So the YMCA was involved in kind of looking at these different sites or potential sites. And so uh, similarly to Wellness Center number three, you know, all of the same demographic data, uh, quantity of homes, population, population over 50, all of these things that are, are critical to the continued success of the Wellness Center were looked at for each one of the sites. And so uh, you can see here in the, uh, the near northwest Oklahoma City area, we, ha we had one potential site, um, just somewhat limited up there. And so uh, we did look at that site with the YMCA and kind of looked at some of the demographic data and the health outcomes in the area. Um, we also looked at 15 other sites in South Oklahoma City, and so you can see a, um, a map here that kind of summarizes those site locations and, uh, uh, again, went through all the same data, looked at those with the operator, and, and, and considered the, the demographic data as well as the health outcomes in the area. Um, we also considered the operator business model and kind of um, in terms of, you know, what, what works well for the YMCA in terms of separation of service from their existing facilities, and so we had a bit of a discussion with them about that. I, I guess the one thing I would say as it relates to the operator business model is um, to phrase it that way almost sounds like there's some type of financial gain on the part of the Y, and I, I guess I just want to reiterate that the YMCA is kind of a community asset, and so when we say operator business model, those are really the same, the, the objectives of that business model are the same objectives that we have as a community in terms of supporting our citizens, so I, I just kind of want to underline that for everyone here this afternoon. Um, so based on all that uh, information, that exercise, we have arrived at a site similarly to, to Wellness 3, and so uh, Site 16 is actually the site that's been selected. It's just south of uh, Southwest 134th and Southwestern Avenue. It's about a 10-acre site. Um, there is a little bit of topographic relief on it. There is a nice water feature on the back side of the property, and so we're hoping that uh, GSB is uh, able to somehow weave that into the design and make it a, um, an amenity for the facility. So. Uh, it is, we believe, compatible with the operator's business model, and so we think it's a really great site and uh, provides some separation from existing services, so we are personally really excited about moving this project forward. So uh, again, so that's kind of where we're at, and so kind of where we're moving forward, as David said, the, the schedule for Wellness Center number four is going to be very similar to Wellness Center number three. Um, in our estimation, as of today, we think it tracks about a month behind Wellness Center number three, but they're essentially going to be going in tandem, and so uh, I was talking with uh, Hornby Blatt and GSB yesterday, and so I think they've decided to race each other, so that ought to be really interesting. But um, So it will track very similarly, so we feel like uh, we will pro likely be going, a uh, preliminary report will be going to council early spring of next year uh, with final plans to council in late summer and then bidding uh, kind of early to uh, mid-fall 
uh, which would get us to about a January of 2022 opening date. And so that's kind of the schedule that uh, we're anticipating moving forward. So um, with that, I know I went through that really quick. I'm trying to be respectful of everyone's time, but if there are any questions or comments, uh, that's all I have. Remind me what the size of one and two are. Are they 10 acres or thereabouts? Is this about the same size? I can both of those are uh, between four and five acres. That's what I was thinking. So this would be <coughs> double the double the size. This is a parcel. This is a parcel that um, is what it is. It, they're selling it as, as nine and a half acres, but part of it is in a pond. So it's not all land. There is a pond in it. Fishing. <laughs> Any other, any other questions, Jason? I, I guess I have one question, I guess. This is um, near the border for the city limits of Moore. And so a, I assume that a large part of the uh, population we'd be serving would be Moore residents. Is there any thought or consideration or concern that, in that regard? Well, there's a lot of uh, Wellness Center 1 that has people from Edmond and, and Yukon and Piedmont, at, but it, it serves that area that's right there also. So um, it's still about a mile to a mile and a half away from the actual border of Moore, about a mile. Half a mile. It's, it's close, it is on the edge, but, but the, the density there to the northwest is, is heavy in Oklahoma City. So hopefully we can get those folks to come a little bit further and spend their money in Oklahoma City. But yeah, it, it, certainly, certainly, we, you know, we welcome all the all the participants we can. I just didn't know if there was a concern. Right, and and what really becomes a, an effort is to find five acres in in heavily dense population populated areas it, at a reasonable price. Yeah, well, to find it at all, yeah, and then at a reasonable price. Any other questions? And this comes with the uh, recommendation from the subcommittee. I move the resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Item 10, David. <clears throat> Item 10 is a recommended resolution approving architectural services contract with GSB Incorporated, MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number 4. Fee of $1,117,337, project M3-H005. So this um, is the architectural contra contract. The interviews were done um, as they're always done through Public Works through the same process, and GSB was selected. Remember that GSB was also the architect on Wellness Center 1, so they definitely have experience of this, and we're um, very anxious to get started with them on this next one. Questions or comments? Been moved and second. We approve the resolution. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Let me pause to say hello, Kim. We're, we're glad to see you here. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, item 11. Item 11 is recommend resolution accepting the MAPS 3 streetcar storage and maintenance facility and placing the maintenance bonds into effect, project M3 S006. Uh, we feel that we are at the point where we need to accept the project. We had some equipment that was lagging that they needed to fix, and that's finally been done. It's been in use for almost a, a year, so we're ready to finally accept this project. We didn't have quorum yesterday, but we um, got the update from staff and, and uh, feel comfortable moving forward with that, so I would uh, recommend approval. Been moved and seconded that we approve the resolution. Further questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. It's approved. Next item, David. Next item is a recommended resolution approving final plans and specifications, MAPS 3, modern streetcar, mainline additional improvements, and authorizing the city clerk to advertise for bids to be received October 30th, 2019, project M3-S008. Doug Smith with Jacobs is here, and I'd like to invite him up to give you a, an overview of what all is included in these plans. Welcome, Doug. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, board members. Good to be back with you again. So today we'll be telling you about a bundle of things that we need to put together to, to kind of put our final touches on the streetcar project. When we opened in December, there were a few things that had to 
kind of have band-aids put on them to get through the safety certification process. And a few other things that we wish we could have completed that we're trying to fit in now. So the first things on the list are some SSO improvements. You know, the ODOT had the state safety office that reviewed everything for opening and issued the, the certification to, be, to go ahead and issue and, and, and open the project. And there was a few things they wanted done. One of them was the barrier railings. And you probably noticed that we still have the kind of yellow-green fencing that's out there on those leaning rails. And so they wanted those closed up. They believed there was a safety issue there. So we're going to get that done. And they wanted bumpers on the faces of the curbs. And, and so we're going to include that. And then our traction power substations, they wanted some additional improvements to those to, to make the sites more secure. In addition to that, uh, the, the Oklahoma City Boulevard was in the process of being built, and it was behind us in terms of schedule. And we needed to have a sidewalk there to put a, a railing on, a barrier railing, and we couldn't build that because there wasn't anything to mount the railing to. But that's all done now, and that's opened up, so we're going to go finish that. And then there's a betterment that Embark identified in terms of an emergency generator that they were able to get donated to the city, and they'd like to install that now. And then uh, we had some previous contract limitations in terms of the Fifth Street turnback, which is an important operational feature for the streetcar systems. I'll give you a little more detail about each one of those. But first, this is basically the bid form that we're proposing. If this is authorized, bid package A would include several of these miscellaneous things that I described, and they would be lump sum items. And then bid package B would be a separate item that the bidders would propose on. And it would include the Fifth Street turnback items, which is the biggest part of the package. And then we would add that up to an A plus B format so we could decide to select two contractors for the work or to select one contractor if there's a cost advantage to be able to do that. So that's the, the bid strategy on this one. The uh, wire mesh fabric that we're proposing to put on the leaning rails is a two-inch square fabric. Um, one of the reasons it has taken a while to get to this point is that we sort of need to find something that was architecturally appealing, but also met the requirements for the safety office. So we had uh, kind of a lot of fingers in the pot here to try to work this out. But we did come up with this wire mesh fabric that will be put in all those gaps where the fencing is, or the, the, the temporary fencing is right now. Then the, what they call the bus bumpers would go on the face of that curb. That's that 14-inch high curb. And we've had issues with vehicles, especially when we initially put them in with vehicles um, hitting them with their tires and wheels. So this provides a, a more resilient surface instead of having concrete there. So that should improve the damage to the concrete and also provide a more safe configuration for everyone. So you can see there in the bottom view, that's a little profile section of what that would look like when it's attached to the face of the curb. At the traction power substation sites, and there are six of these, and the, one of them we have, the number six we have at our maintenance facility, and it's behind fencing already, so we won't need to do this at that one. But the, the other five are sitting out adjacent to alleyways, and they're basically kind of out of the way, which is the way we wanted them. But um, there are areas, there are gaps under the substations, which the safety concern was someone might be able to crawl under there. It'd be tight, but they could do it, and also might be able to get at the power conduits that are under there. So they wanted that area secured, and you can see in that top photo, that top uh, sketch, well, we'd be adding a wire mesh in there to be able to seal that off all the way around. And then the ground wires, you can see in the photo, there, there's a ground wire that comes down near the foundation. There's four of those at each side, and they wanted that ground wire not exposed so that it wouldn't be a, a temptation for vandalism. And so that, that would now be routed underneath and, and behind the secured area. Then on the boulevard, you can see the red line on the bottom photo. That is the alignment for that new railing. And you can see that it goes right adjacent to the track slab. And there's a new sidewalk there now. And it will be installed on that sidewalk. And what that railing does is it discourages pedestrians from walking right across the, the rail. And it, that allows the, the drivers of the streetcars to go a little faster through that area. And that's the way we had always intended it. And so it'll improve our route time just a little bit. But, we, but if Embark chooses to do so, and they'll have to evaluate this, they may want to increase their speed limit through there a little bit once we get this railing up. 
And you can see there's a gap there for the, where the new Harvey um, Street comes through, and then uh, it wraps around uh, stop five and provides some additional protection for pedestrians just to keep a separation between the, the streetcar and the pedestrians. The generator pad, and this is the maintenance facility yard. This is TPSS number six. Um, just to the left of that, you can see those gray, those are electrical cubicles, and they feed power to the stop five, to the charging bar, and also to the charging plugs in the building. And the goal here is to, where that orange rectangle is, to put a generator pad in so that the donated generator can be placed there. And then Embark has a plan to tie that in and feed DC power out in a situation um, where the substation is under maintenance. It might be down for two or three days. And in that situation, they wouldn't be able to use their stop five charging bar. And that's especially important for the Bricktown loop. So this gives them backup power in that situation. And they also have uh, a goal to be able to use the generator and tie it into the building for some additional backup power under a power failure. They're, so they're working on that project independently. And then finally, the 5th Street turn back. So this is where we turn off of Broadway and onto 5th Street. And this particular project will add all the systems work. So it'll wire up the power switch. That switch hasn't been functional. It will provide a heater on that switch. And then all the tie-ins with the, the train to wayside controls tying into the traffic signal. So that if the train wants to make the left turn on 5th Street, it'll go ahead and get the all red transit only phase to be able to make the left turn on the 5th Street and do that turn back. And then similarly, on the Robinson side, it'll be able to enter the Robinson southbound, and it'll get its own phase on the traffic signal with the train and wayside control. There's no power switch here because they're just turning in and going into the turnouts that are already installed there. But that, that is basically it, is getting it back into the flow of the, of the Robinson traffic. And that's right out in front of the memorial there. So to summarize, we're packaging these improvements to, to solve all the outstanding issues that were left over when we opened up the project last December. And this dual bid package that set up believes that provides maps through you with the best options to be able to select, as I said, one or two contractors or only one contractor to get all these things done. But that's the summary for today and happy to answer any questions. Questions for Doug? I had one question. I was curious as to what the substrate was on the bus bumper additions and how they were affixed to the curb. I'm sorry, what the what was on the bumper? The substrate that those bumpers are made out of and how they're affixed to the curb. The, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> the, the substrate. The substrate. What, what, are the, what are the bumpers made out of and how they're attached? They're made out of a, a, a kind of a hard plastic material. and. And so it's made to be more of a resilient material if something bumps into it, that it'll bounce off. Did, did that answer the question? <clears throat> they're, they're actually for two purposes. They're to protect the, the cars that hit it so they don't hit concrete, but they're also there to protect the concrete that get hit by the cars because they're getting damaged and chipped. And this would be a little easier on a wheel or something being the plastic instead of hitting the concrete. And the way they're attached, they're just anchor bolted right in into the concrete. Mm -hmm. They're they're concealed. No, they're concealed back behind the road. Okay, you bet. Other questions? Shall we approve it? <laughs> it's been moved and second. We approve the resolution. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. It's approved. Item 13, David. <clears throat> Item 13 is recommend resolution approving final plans and specifications, maps three, whitewater facility, double occupancy, surf machine, and authorizing the city clerk to advertise for bids to be received October 30th, 2019, project M3-R008A. Tony Blatt from Hornbeak Blatt Architects is here to, to uh, give you the details on this project. Good morning, Chairman, board members. This, this is one of several, of several amenities that we're going to be bringing forward to you that are going to happen in the, in the uh, river sports area. This is a, a dual occupancy surf machine. It's basically an, a ride in which individuals can step up onto or be guided up onto a two-inch layer of water that's on a trampoline-style floating platform that is a surface that they can then do boogie boarding or surfing, and they can do that. And, 
back and forth uh, and it can handle two people. And the way that this works is, is that it is a skill-based ride. So someone gets up on it and the very first time they ride it, they only have success based on what they've experienced or based on what they watch. And obviously it's got a certain level of complexity to it. But once they do it, it's exhilarating and it's something that's very fun. So they have a reason and a desire to come back and ride again. This is a ride that will be part of your, your ticketed price when you enter into the, into the area. So an individual can get on and they can ride as many times as they want to throughout the day. That opportunity then causes people to have an incentive to come back several times, repeat the ride. It allows for individuals to come back and, and experience this many times over the course of a season, over the course of several seasons. And then it all, what it also will do is because an individual gets on and they ride and there are a lot of individuals who have very short rides, that it allows for a lot of throughput. So a whole lot of individuals will be able to come on and ride and that's going to give the opportunity for me, more people to have more experiences while in the park on a day-by-day -day basis. So in addition to the individual who gets to ride on this facility, it is equally as exciting for the individual who is going to sit on the sidelines and watch. So one of the things that we're going to be doing in some of these future, minutes, future projects is we're going to show you an elevated deck in the current River Sports facility that somebody can sit right adjacent to this ride and watch individuals who will be doing this surfing. And that's going to increase food and beverage sales, it's going to increase the opportunity for an individual who wants to come out and maybe not get wet, but they want to have something exciting to do while they're inter entertaining or having something to eat or drink. It's also going to give the opportunity for when mom or dad or grandparent or child come out, it's going to have many more opportunities for an age-wide, demographic-wide distribution of, of, of experiences while somebody is in the park. So. Someone's going to want to come out and they're going to want to get into the rapids. Another individual might not want to be in the rapids, but they would be just as excited about sitting beside in one spot and watching people on the rapids and at the same time watching an individual who is going to be on this flow rider or this dual, uh, dual occupancy surf machine. Um, so one of the other items that happens is, is that these have the opportunity for Pro-M circuits to come out and, and people to actually have more of a professional type rider, someone who has a lot more experience, and it's an opportunity to have basically a venue in which somebody comes out and puts on for, for more experienced riders to come out and experience this. Um, so we say 240 to 48, 480 rides per hour. That's a very short time frame, but what that is is somebody gets out on there and it's by the time that they ride it very quickly, very quickly and are off, they can probably get right back on and try several times and they have several rides within a very short time period. It's an average over the course of, of an hour time period. Um, it is located in between the, the River Sports Rapid building and the current raft building. The raft building structure has an elevated platform that is allowing us to have a spot to put the pumps for this in a very cost effective way. It's also a spot that has been desired to be activated. So it's an area right now that's adjacent to the, to the rapids. It's adjacent to the, uh, to the raft storage building where they do their training. And it's also adjacent to the river sports facility that has the uh, Big Water Grill. All of these things combined to this spot, which is, is, is really something that people were wanting to have. The entire staff and, and the group was wanting this to be a, a very active spot. This is, a, this is an image of what this, 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 uh, this ride will look like. And the, the intent is that it really covers a wide range of ages. It could start as early as elementary school, like what you're seeing here. Young individuals can get on this and ride. And then it can go as old as anybody who wants. It, it, you, there's really no limit as long as you're willing to get on the ride and try it. It's perfectly acceptable. So most of the time, it's probably going to be a younger group. When we have one of these pro-am circuits, it would be uh, probably a uh, Olympic age individual, which is still a wide age range. So, so that's the intent for this ride. Um, it is exciting to start these projects. And this is one of many, like we, well, I was saying, that, that we'll be bringing before you. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions? I, yeah, quick question. Uh, the funding for this uh, comes from 
previous dollars that like that this seven this is being paid out of the the additional 7.9 that was allocated is this a unique design or is this based on other similar types of events at other venues it's based on so the, there are Flowrider and Pacific Surf are two specific types of, of uh, elements. The basis of design for this one is a Flowrider, and they exist in many different uh, areas. So it's really it's based on a proven ride. It's not an invention, and the 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 system is a tried and true uh, ride and experience. Michael, I, and I think too one of the ideas is to try to get this done and maybe have it installed for next season. For next season, yes. Yeah. The, the hope and intent is that we have it. kind of bringing it ahead of some of the other projects. Yes, sir. Sue, I can tell you personally that as a water skier, and still a water skier, and wakeboarder, that surfing is really hot right now. So we we have as a family had a lot of experience this summer with surfing and seeing lots of other boating enthusiasts doing surfing. So I think this is a great idea. Bob? Just to comment, I think it's phenomenal that you would have an opportunity to go surfing in the middle of Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia? Personal comment, I, I probably could have used this lesson before I've attempted surfing without the lessons. So I can, I can attest to the fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? So what, we're, what you're asking us for today is approval to advertise for bids, and then it'll be back for approval as it works through the process. Yes, is sir. That it, David? Yes, sir. All right. Been moved and second. We adopt the resolution and approve it. Is there further discussion? And, and I'm, I need to point out, I'm sorry. I missed this. You have a, a revised uh, memo in your in your packet, so the, re the if you move the resolution, it needs to be on the revised amendment. The the budget there was a typo in the in the proposed budget. So, Michael, do you move it as amended? And is the second uh, approving that? All right. Further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is approved. Item 14. Item 14 is recommend resolution ratifying and approving addenda numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, maps 3, Oklahoma River, Whitewater Facility, Water Filtration System Improvements, 800 Riversport Drive, and rejecting bids, project M3-R009. Um, these came in substantially over uh, the budget that we had and, and where we thought we would be, and we're asking you to formally reject these bids, and we will come back at a later time with another solution. Been moved, and, been moved and seconded that we uh, reject the bids as provided in the resolution. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. That brings us to item 15. Is there any new business to be considered by the Citizens Advisory Board? Then that brings us to item 16, and I want to say I want to give uh, Kim and Mike and, and Councilman Stonecipher a chance to tell us whatever they want to tell us about what's coming up this weekend. We're going to start with Kimberly Lowe. Kimberly? Well, thank you very much. So um, if anybody lives in Oklahoma City, has traveled through Oklahoma City, or even is in the United States, they probably know right now that we're building a world-class park in downtown Oklahoma City. Um, it's really been 25 years in the making from concept um, and a little bit over 10 years of work um, from the people on the subcommittee, uh, the MAPS office, certainly everyone here and um, thousands of people behind that. So this weekend we are celebrating the grand opening of Scissor Tail Park um, with a very um, action-packed weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, certainly the, the main event uh, will be our large concert on Friday in our Oval Lawn. Um, this fire marshal has rated it for 30,000 attendants. So come one, come all. Make sure you read all the rules. No chairs, no blankets. Um, it's going to be a little bit of standing room only so that we can get as many people to this wonderful event as possible. Um, you can gain access to the park at 5 p.m. on Friday. Concert uh, music will begin at 6.30. 
uh, Kings of Leon will be the, the headliner performance probably on stage about 9 o'clock. Um, there will be fireworks Friday night. Saturday will start a whole day of events, lots of cultural music. Um, again, a great day for family and fun. Uh, food trucks all day long, thank you very much. Um, adult beverages, children's beverages. Um, and then Sunday, we, we round up the day with many activities outside. Uh, the Oklahoma City Phil will be playing and um, fireworks to round things out. So it's very condensed. If you looked at the Oklahoman last week, there was an eight-page insert with a lot of great details. If you go to scissortailpark.org, every single detail for the event is open, and there's a lot of great preview shots, a lot of wonderful information about what you can and, and can't bring, and the best ways to come in, where to park, how to travel in, and I, I just, I, I couldn't be more excited to um, be able to announce this with all of you the, to the public that it's really happening and um, it's a great time to be in Oklahoma City. Michael Dover, anything else to add? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to just mention that the mayor and city council were nice enough to uh, uh, say not only is this a celebration of the park, but it is, uh, it will probably be the principal celebration of the MAP3 development, and uh, it is something that we're able to open for everyone, so I want to call on our Councilman Stone Cypher to add any comments that he wanted. The only thing I'd like to amplify on, because I've been getting a lot of calls from younger people, what time can I get there? How early can I get there? And, um, and so the doors open at 5 p.m. Uh, from 6 to 6.30 is the ribbon cutting, 6.30 to 10.45, Kings of Leon and two other bands play, and then at 10.45 to 11 are the fireworks. And uh, it's going to be an incredible night. Tom, you and I can get up next morning and be there at 8 a.m. for the yoga class if we like. Yes. So that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> and um, there is, um, as you said, Kimberly, there's a great brochure that was put out by the Oklahoman, presented by the Chickasaw Nation, that has every activity that's ongoing. You can find that online. I would be remiss if I didn't say at this time, um, Tom, and to each one of the board members, this is a great day, and it's a great weekend. And it is because of your hard work for many, many, many years. And we are very proud of your accomplishments. And we think this will be a historical moment in time for Oklahoma City. And I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you, Councilman. We, all of us really appreciate that. And I just want to, you may have heard him say that there's a ribbon cutting. That's going to be at about 6 or 6.15. And uh, certainly the members of the Citizens Advisory Board are welcome to that. I'm, I'm, advised that it's going to be on the stage, isn't it? Yeah, and, and it's between 6 and 6.30. Between, so it's going to be brief. It's going to be brief, but there's going to be a ribbon cutting that will be on stage, and uh, love to have all of you there to be a part of it. Okay. Um, next item, David. Um, the next item is, is just the update. We've talked about pretty much every project with the exception of trails and sidewalks, and I can tell you that the Draper Trail is very close to wrapping up, and, and within the next couple of weeks we'll be wrapping that up, and you'll see a, a ribbon cutting for that also. And then um, the plans for the additional improvements out of the fairgrounds are on the street now. We had very good uh, uh, attendance at our pre-bid meeting, so that is ongoing. Other than that, I think we've covered everything today. Well, I want to I want to just add at the close of David's. We've said a lot of thank yous today, and there's certainly no one more deserving than David and his staff, Carrie and Lisa and Mark and Carol and everyone who have just uh, almost become family for all of us as, as we've now working on nine and a half years of working on all this together, and, that, and it simply couldn't have been done without the great staff that we have, and we thank all of you, and I just really appreciate that. And Jason to ADG, who's been our, our partner and consultant in this for the whole nine and a half years, it's been a really, it's been a really uh, great team effort, and really appreciate it, and we've even seen Lance lose his health, come back to his health, come back and stay with us for nine and a half years. And you know, it's just, it's, uh, it almost feels like family when somebody uh, has to leave for a little bit and come back and so forth. So it's been a, uh, it's been a great nine and a half years and thank you to all of you, uh, David and your team. It's just been fantastic. Thank you. 
All right, we have uh, item 18 is the, um, or the informational items. There's only one, and you've had a chance to review it. Are there any questions or comments about the informational item? I, I put this on here just so that you'll see that, that this is some of the equipment that was bought for the park off a of city contract, so it didn't come through formally like we usually do with, with bids, but um, like we did with the streetcar and we've done with the, the wellness centers, we uh, we buy all the items needed to start business for these projects and uh, get them going. So I just wanted to provide that to you so you could see it. Thank you. All right. Any any comments by the board? All right. Anybody? Staff members have comments. Are there citizens here that would like to make a comment or be heard by the citizens advisory board? Well, from five presentations and 20 items, getting through an hour is a pretty good thing. Uh, Bob, you wanted to move, we adjourned, didn't you? And Cecilia wanted to second it. So they move and second the adjournment. All in favor say aye. Aye. We're adjourned.